Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the hinge tweaker in a blue size. They make a red, a green, and a blue. And the difference in those colors is the type of, or I should say, size of hinge uh, that you're really going to be contending with. Um, there is a horizontal link of navigation above this video that will allow you to click on hinge repair tools and then hinge tweakers. And you'll find the three variants. Um, certainly the one that we sell the most of is going to be the green because that is the standard um, weight capable hinge. But you can also do heavy weight with it. Uh, so it's a dual tool in the sense that it will handle uh, you know, four and a half, four and a half, or five by five, it'll handle 134 thousandths or 180 thousandths if it's four and a half, four and a half, or 140 thousandths and 190 thousandths if it's five by five. It'll handle those uh, size hinges. If you know that you're doing only heavyweight hinges, I might suggest the heavyweight only tool because um, it's less expensive, uh, is the bottom line. Um, I don't know that I'd want to lock myself into not being able to do standard weight for, you know, what is probably $30 or, or $40 perhaps, so be mindful of that. The tool is going to come with its cell sheet, and that's going to be linked down below here uh, to the document called, as I'm waiting for it to load, Right, uh, the cell sheet. Um, so the document that's here called brochure, it's a multi-page document that will allow you to go over all of the hinge tweakers that they have available. The red, the blue, the green. Um, I don't actually see where they show the green in particular. Then there was a link to a document called Installation Instructions. And that is what's included with the box, the installation instructions. Back to the back to the brochure. Let's let's take a closer look at that. This is clearly an outdated uh, document where they're only showing two. And I will request from them an updated document if they have one that shows the green and we'll we'll bring that into the fold because that is the um, that is the two-in-one tool that is a two-in-one tool in the sense that it's double-ended okay and actually if we click on the green one take a look at the brochure loaded there yeah it's the same outdated document not showing the double-ended tool okay so let's focus just on the portion of the current brochure that talks about the blue and then we'll get into the installation instructions dimensional properties uh, what a hinge looks like in it We'll go over the product brochure and then the installation instructions. So here's what the tool looks like. It's heavy. It weighs about 3.6 pounds. It's a steel construction, large piece of tube steel that's here with a blue enamel paint, a black rubber handle on it. Um, dimensions. Four and a half inch. Uh, overall length about 19 inch, 19 and a quarter inch overall. Okay. Um, what does a hinge look like in it? I happen to have a um, surprise. I happen to have a heavyweight hinge here. This is a four and a half, four and a half, so it's 180 thousandths thick. You can tell it's heavyweight because it has four bearing packets. You're going to slide the tool over that barrel. Now you're ready to make hay. There's no doubt about it. With the amount of leverage that you can put onto this hinge, um, you're going to be able to affect a change in the swag of the hinge. And re-swagging the hinge is really what term you'll hear from people in the know. So the swag on a hinge leaf is literally the relationship between this part here and how it bends in right at the tip of my finger that's the swag if it was a full more a full surface hinge where you laid it flat down 
onto the surface and it would all sit flush, there would be no swag. The hinge leaf would literally be even with the bottom of the barrel here. When they put a swag onto both leaves and you bring the leaves parallel, that's how you're going to have a full mortise hinge because you're going to have the door and frame mortised. You'll maintain that margin between the two and the only way to make that happen is to have a swag on the hinge leaves. Okay? That's what you're doing. You're re-swagging the hinge leaves. When you put that tool over that barrel and you start to bend, you are going to move something. There's no doubt about it. Um, obviously it can go this way or you can go this way with it. Now what's the purpose of the tool? The purpose of the tool is to get a hinge bent or re-swagged to the point where the door will actually operate. There'd be a, a number of reasons for that. You might have um, a frame that is um, installed so that it's a little bit tight and what you're going to do is re-swag the hinge so that you can bend the hinge so that you decrease the margin on one side of the door, uh, on the hinge side of the door, obviously. You might have an unusually large frame and you want to bend that hinge over so that you can balance the margin on either side of the door and frame a little bit better. But generally you're going to find a situation where you have too heavy of a gap on the hinge side, too small of a gap on the lock side, and you're going to swag that hinge over so that you can pull the door over towards the hinge side and make the door close is why that's really going to be used. In fact, it's quite common practice for people to physically try to make a metal, metallurgical change in a steel door and frame. Um, people are doing it anyway. They might, they might be, I've, I've seen people do it, they put a wedge in the door and they just slam the door closed. Um, yeah, that's going to that's gonna make some metal move, there's no doubt. The problem with that is you don't have any real way to control exactly what it is that's being bent to make room. Um, so having a tool like this will allow you to have better control over what you're doing. Um, inherently the problem that you deal with is the possibility of causing more damage than it's worth. What I mean is this. Hinge plates, hinge reinforcements, and door and frames, those are spot welded on, generally. They probably aren't a door more common. They're, you know, a spot welder has two electrodes that pinch like this over the two pieces of metal, and they have to, you have to have adequate penetration to have a proper weld. Well, when you're dealing with an 18 or a 20 gauge or a 16 gauge steel on the edge of the door, you know, you're trying to weld something that might be 7 gauge down to something that might be 18 gauge and you have to have a balance of those electrodes in terms of the penetration or the heat that you're running through there um, so that you don't literally dissolve, burn away or burn a hole through the 18 gauge steel. So it's a, it's a, it's a balance of the penetration, meaning I don't know that I would trust every spot weld on a hinge um, ever. I have been on job sites where I've heard people re-swagging the hinges and I've heard popping sounds. They're breaking the welds. So with this sort of tool you can a bit more elegantly control what you're doing but it's not giving you feedback in terms of the weld speaking to you saying listen I'm about to break. So there's a downside of using this tool. There's a huge upside of using the tool and that you can at 358 on a Friday you can get that door to close and latch. Um, and the logic is that let me just re-swag the hinge, get it to close and latch, because it's a fire door. You can't leave until that fire door operates correctly. And then on Monday, we're going to figure out how to best handle fixing it permanently. Well, a hinge tweaker to most people is going to be considered a permanent fix. You run the risk of fatiguing or compromising the weld. You run the risk of breaking the weld then you have a much more substantial problem or tearing or de de deforming the steel of the door and frame. Um, from, a, from a perspective of a certified fire door and egress assembly inspector, I would urge you to consider replacing the material, the door and or frame and or hardware, with the correct material. Doors need to close, fire doors need to close and they need to latch and they need to do that under by all means of activation. And if you have a door that's not properly closing and latching because the hinge 
and the relationship between the hardware and the door and frame is not healthy, uh, and then you try to mitigate the problem with such a tool, you may or may not have permanently solved it. You have certainly at some level compromised the integrity of the door and frame beyond what it was engineered to. So the bottom line is take the good with the bad and understand what this tool is best used for. I would say that it is used by those who would uh, conclude that it would be an acceptable means to reswag a hinge, uh, a type of tool that you might have in your in your arsenal of available tools to you. Um, I've reswagged hinges. I've done it with large wrenches. I've done it with wedges. I've done it with a tool like this, and I've broken welds. And that is not good um, when you break a weld because now you're dealing with replug weld, welding everything. If you have a fire rated application, you technically no longer have a fire rated application. So again, take the good with the bad on this. It's a great tool. People love it. Um, we sell them routinely. I stock them because I can guarantee uh, that I'm going to sell these. People do um, really just want to be able to get the door to close properly. And sometimes you're dealing with a door that, um, an exterior door that's not fire rated. The mason has simply not braced the frame properly. Uh, and it's a little bit tight on one side, or it's a little bit flared out on one side. And um, yeah, you're gonna put this hinge tweak around there and you're gonna make it work. And you're gonna say to yourself, well, if I break that weld, someone's just gonna pay me to put on a continuous hinge. I got it. If that's your uh, outlook on it, I totally agree, have at it. Uh, hopefully the welds are substantial enough not to break. Not that they break, but it does happen. It's not often, but it does happen. When you've got 20 inch of leverage potentially happening on what you're doing, I'd say you'd be able to get a lot of leverage. So. Uh, the product catalog designed to fit standard weight, uh, pardon me, heavyweight hinges. It should say heavyweight. That's a misprint. Powder coated finish. This is the blue one. High visibility blue, easy to locate. If you're looking for your tool. Oh, it's the blue one. Welded one piece construction for increased strength and durability. Okay. There you go. So the installation instructions that are here as well. Let's take a look at that. What is the purpose of a hinge tweaker? The hinge tweaker are therapy for your doors. To be more precise, the standard the hinge tweaker is designed to rebend standard weight and heavyweight hinges, allowing you to operate the door correctly. In the door and hardware industry, we would effectively call this rebending technique closing the swagging of a hinge or closing the gap. Um, yeah, or you know, or the opposite, I suppose. You're 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 closing the swedging of a hinge, the the swag. The hinge tweakers are used correctly. When used correctly, can be a time and labor saver. Utilize the hinge tweaker and give a lift to your sagging doors. The hinge tweakers can be used to correct minor improper door and frame clearances. Yeah, minor, where you've got some contact. Uh, where the door closer just can't overcome that contact. Yeah, you can bend that hinge a little bit, and you shouldn't have a problem doing that at all. Um, swagging is when that top hinge is kind of fatigued, and now the door is pulling away from the top hinge. The truth of the matter is 70% of the door's weight is actually hung on that top hinge. So that's why you will always see a wide gap at the top and a very small gap at the bottom. Well, when you throw the hinge tweaker onto the top hinge, be mindful that that's the most abused application. And be mindful that if you're going to break a weld, it would be on the welds that have taken the most weight and done the most duty of hanging the door over its life. But that's going to be probably where you're going to play it. And you're going to want to bend that to pull that door back towards the frame. And it's very likely that just changing the vertical axis of the hinge ever so slightly will allow you to draw that back far enough so that it works. The issue is that um, it is indeed for minor gaps, you know, a sixteenth of an inch kind of stuff, and there you go. Um, which door hinge do I place the hinge tweaker on? Most frequent adjustments will be com completed on the top hinge. Why in the top hinge? Simply stated, the top door hinge realizes the greatest stress because it carries the majority of the weight of the door. Therefore, in standard door operating conditions, the top hinge will bend and spread apart more than other hinges on the same door, plus the clearance between the knuckles and the pin, that all wears out as well. The second most 
frequent hinge is the middle and then lastly the, the bottom hinge. How do I use the hinge tweaker? Leave the door hanging and swinging. There is no need to remove the door. Close the door. Slide the hinge tweaker over the hinge knuckles uh, of the bent hinge while the door is in the closed position. Bend the hinge slightly by pushing the hinge tweaker away from the door knob side of the door, so towards the hinge side. After bending the hinge slightly, remove the hinge tweaker and then check for proper operation. Make your hinge bending adjustments a little at a time to, over, to avoid overbending and overcompensating the hinge and the frame. That will make the door want to spring out if you overcompensate. Repeat the hinge bending process as necessary to get the de desired results. Having the, to have the door closed properly. Caution, excessive force may damage the hinge and or the door and or the frame. Okay, Great little tool. We do sell them. We've got them if you need them. Finally, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page in our site that will allow you to get to the page that shows uh, the items that we sell. There's uh, three of them that are there. It's just an easy way to get right to it, if you know what I mean. If you have any questions on the hinge tweaker in a blue finish or any other hinge tweaker product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.